As you can see, a parallel circuit consists of a power supply and a minimum of two or more consumers, in our case two resistors. We can immediately notice that both resistors are connected directly to the power supply. This means that their voltage will be the same as the supply voltage and we will denote it by V12. Why denote additional voltage V12? Well, because this is a simple example it may not be necessary but in a more complex circuit this parallel resistor circuit can be found in series with other resistors and then the V12 can be significantly lower than the supply voltage. We will talk about this in detail in the following video about mixed circuits. As with a serial circuit, we can also simplify a parallel circuit. In this case, we calculate the total resistance according to the equation. This equation is used only for two parallel resistors. An official equation can be used for three or more resistors. Perhaps the official equation is too complex for many students because it is expressed through conductivity. Fortunately, there is another way, and although it is a bit longer, it is more acceptable to many students, the total resistance for the first two resistors is calculated and, then that result is recalculated together with the third resistor and so on. The result is exactly the same and it is up to you to choose which method of calculation you prefer. Take for example that we have three resistors whose values are 10, 5 and 3 kilo ohms. For a more accurate calculation, it is better to convert kilo ohms to ohms. Then we enter these values into the equation and calculate the right side of the equation. In the end, such a simplified equation is easy to solve and we get the value of the total resistance of 1,58 kilo ohms. If we calculate the total resistance in another way then we will first calculate the resistor R12. Then we include this value in the new equation and associate the resistor R3. The total resistance Rx is also 1.58 kilo ohms. So just pick which way you prefer and that is all. Now that we have solved the resistors, it remains to solve the currents in the parallel circuit. We return to the first diagram where we see that the current I is divided in the first node into currents I1 and I2. I1 flows through the resistor R1, and the current I2 through the resistor R2. In the second node these currents are collected again in the current I. According to Kirchhoff's law, the sum of currents flowing into that node is equal to the sum of currents flowing out of that node. In other words, the algebraic sum of currents in a network of conductors meeting at a point is zero. In the end we only have to calculate the currents I1 and I2. V12 is actually the common voltage across resistors R1 and R2, in our case the supply voltage. Finally, using Ohm's law, we calculate the currents I1 and I2. That should be all you need to know about a parallel circuit, so that you can further independently calculate and design these types of circuits. Let's apply this knowledge in practice on a simple example. The supply voltage is 12 volts and the resistors R1 and R2 have values of 10 kilo ohms. It is necessary to calculate the total resistance and all currents in the circuit. First we calculate the total resistance. Then the total current I. Then the currents I1 and. I2. Finally we add the currents I1 and I2 and we have to get the same result. This is proof that we have calculated everything well. In the second example, we will see the actual application of a parallel circuit, as I promised. For example, 
we need to limit the current to 1,17 mA with a tolerance of 0,03 mA at a voltage of 5 volts. In the real world we have to use the actual values of the resistors which is sometimes not so easy. But why? Because there are billions of different values of resistors and it is not profitable to have just about every value. Therefore, standardized values of resistors are used and their combinations can give others. This is a calibration of a measuring device and it is necessary to get as close as possible to the optimal value. Fortunately, there are tolerances, so it makes it a lot easier for us. So let's start calculating. We will first calculate the optimal value of the resistor. Then we calculate the minimum value. And once again we calculate the maximum value of the resistor Rx. All values between minimum and maximum are acceptable but we will look for the best result. Now we come to the interesting part. It is clear that 4.274 kilo ohms does not exist. Since the resistance Rx is always less than the resistances R1 and R2, we will use this and set R1 a little higher than Rx and by adding the resistance R2 we will try to bring the total resistance closer to optimal. We know the initial values of Rx and R1, let's calculate R2. We must first adjust the initial equation. Then we enter the values of the given resistance R1 and the calculated optimal resistance. We got a resistance value of R2 of 18.05 kilo ohms but we have already said that we will use the standard values by choosing 18 kilo ohms. You can immediately assume that the total current will be a bit higher because we chose a lower resistance than calculated. Now that we know R2 as well, let's calculate the actual Rx. And, we won. The overall resistance is almost ideal and is in a safe zone. We check the current at the end and also confirm that the deviations are minimal. With this we can say that we have successfully limited the current with great accuracy and the device is too well calibrated. If you like this video please subscribe, like, comment and suggest and expect many more interesting videos very often. Thanks for watching and see you.